So we just got the We Create Vision not too long ago, a week or two ago. And look at this beautiful time. I mean, this thing looks good enough to sell. You can see there's actually gradient in here, which I've never seen before on a laser engraver. And which is part of our logo. That's pretty cool. Right? So it does knock out white. It ignores white, which is great because there's a little white artifacts around here when we prepare the image, but it completely ignored it, which is perfect. But it kept the, the gradients here from the colors. And I just think that's a really neat effect. And we did another thing here, another test here, which we'll show you in this video. We had a white box around here and it ignored that as well. But look how great that looks. That is amazing. It's just so precise. I mean, there's very, very little artifacts on this thing whatsoever. This We Create Vision is amazing. You wanna see how we did it? Yes, please. Let's do it. All right, I wanna apologize. It's kind of hard to film this thing with what we have here. We're not really set up for this, but we'll do the best we can. So we open our We Create Vision. We're gonna see we still have our two grates in here. These are aluminum, they're not steel, is that what you told me? Yeah. So they're not it's, magnetic. They're not magnetic. But I'm gonna show you a little trick because magnets are helpful in some circumstances, including this, for one reason that I'll disclose in a second. So what you need to do is if you bought this kit with the rotary attachment, then uh, you can buy it separately as well. We got with the rotary attachment. You'll see there's a little peg in the bottom here. And this is really neat because there's no guessing where you're going to put this. It has to go in one place in the WeCreate Vision. So you're going to see that little peg, and you're going to have to put this down. And notice this rail here is going to hold it up too, which keeps it nice and straight. So there's no mistaking of where you're going to put this thing. So you're going to put it in here. I'll try to get my arm out of the way. And there's a little hole in the side here. I already took the two screws out. There's two screws that come with the assembly. Is my head in the way? No. Nope. And we pop this guy down on the rail like that. And then to secure it, you take the two screws that you took out and then pop them in here. And I'll fast forward through all this. And you really want them in there pretty tight because you don't want this thing to wiggle. I tried it with one screw and it was still a little loose. So I put both of them in there and tighten them up pretty good. Now this is kind of a pain to put in there. Hopefully in the future, future models might have something like a, uh, I was thinking something like a rare earth magnet, which is really strong. So you didn't have to put these in here, but it's not awful. And if you're going to do a bunch of tumblers, it's, it's one setup and you're done. So this is already in here and it's kind of glued in here already. The uh, attachment for the power. You have to make sure your machine is powered off and it says turn off device before plugging this in. And this is what gives power and communication to the rotary attachment. So this plugs into the back, just like this. You gotta find the right area. And you'll notice that this can be up in your way. Sometimes it's up like that. And it says, I think in the manual and the instructions online to kind of tuck it into the groove, but there's really not enough slack to do that. So what I've done is I've taken a couple magnets, which I put- On the weight. <laughs> well, there it is, thank you. And they're, the screws, although these rails are not magnetic, these screws are. So I put this on top like that, and I put another one on top to kind of hold it down. So it keeps this out of the way so the laser head doesn't hit this. So that's pretty tight now. All right, now what we need to do is take this, it's called a chuck. And this unit comes with the rotary attachment. What this is, it goes on the top and it allows you to open or close these little brackets that hold your tumbler in here. You can replace them. There's a couple other sets. And if you're doing ceramics or glass, there's metal pegs that come out of the side too, which are better for the event that these things won't fit on for like curved glasses and, and other things. So I'm going to take a tumbler and I like to put the bottom end here. It'll tell you that it, it can't operate in this area. So if you want it closer to the top, you probably switch it like that, but I'm gonna put the bottom in like this. Is it okay to leave the lid in there? Yeah, I kind of leave the lid on there. It's not gonna to touch the lid okay. because some of the smoke and the uh, smell actually gets inside the tumbler and I had to wash it like 18 times. So I'm gonna leave the top on this time. It's not gonna do anything. There's no pressure or anything gonna build up. So I'm gonna take my chuck and there's a little hole in here, hard to see. Put this in here like this and I'm gonna turn it clockwise to tighten it and yeah, not too tight you don't want to crush it and yeah, right about where it starts to fall out there it got stuck on my magnet actually i'm going to leave it there 
and now that's pretty tight in there. She's not going anywhere. And if you have a long tumbler or something that's considerably heavy. Wait, before you put that in, uh -huh. why don't you put the uh, silicone mat in? Oh, that's a great idea. And we'll explain why we do that. All right, the silicone, well, you can explain. Well, we have the silicone <laughs> baking mat that is beige in color, and our tumbler is black, and the base of the machine is black, so it's kind of hard to see in the software. So we put this underneath it so that we get a little color. It doesn't affect anything. Um, we've ran a couple of test runs and everything came out fine, but it just allows you to see your tumbler better in the software. Yeah, the laser will never touch the silicone. It's just going to focus on this area. So it just kind of does a line back and forth here as right. the tumbler turns. So it won't hit the silicone. Of course, if you're cutting wood, you probably don't want silicone, which we actually left it in there. It kind of burned it, but it is heat resistant. So it'll melt a little bit, but it probably won't poison you. Hopefully not. So that's a great idea to put that in there to kind of illuminate the base a little bit because it's very dark, especially with a black color tumbler. All right, now so, what about this piece over here? All right, so there's one more piece in right. here, and I like to put this in here to stabilize it just in case because the thing shakes a little bit when the engraving process is happening. This thing moves so fast, and it's, there's some considerable weight in this laser assembly, and the whole thing kind of rattles. So it's a good idea to put this support mechanism underneath the little rollers. And you can put that under here and it's kind of hard to figure out where to go because you don't want to level it up so you kind of turn this clockwise and it goes up you see my tumbler is actually moving a little a, bit do you have the little level there is a level that comes with it and that's important so we'll use that to make sure that she is flat so you want it to be perfectly flat because if it's not then your design will be skewed and i'm up a little bit here that looks pretty good. How's that look? See if that I go up too high, good. I go right about here. Yeah, that looks good. I actually good. hear it touching it. Looks pretty good? Yeah. There we go. So I'll take that, oops, take that level off. And now it is ready for engraving. We just close the lid and then we power this unit on. Remember we had to power it off before we connected the, the rotating device. And we'll go into our software and see what we have to do here. All right, so first thing we have to do is measure this, and the best way to do this is with a little, like a flexible tape. What do you call this? A tape measure. Measuring tape? Yeah. They use these for fabrics and stuff. Yep. So you see here, I've got it all the way around. This line is about 238 millimeters. You see that 24 centimeters. So there's, well, for those Americans watching, there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter. Did you know that? Uh, you taught me that. <laughs> So it's a little easier, you can get much more fine on your measurements and much more accurate if you use millimeters. So this is about what, 238. If I pull it a little tighter, yeah, it's still about there. All right, so let's go on the software and type that in. So we're in the We Create Make It software and this is what it looks like. We did a refresh in the camera. You can see how it's still kind of dark in there. Imagine that being all black. So right, and that's why we put that mat underneath The silicone it. mat's a great idea. Before we start doing any design work though, mm -hmm. we should change this to laser... Um, oh, cylindrical, so, that's yes. right. Okay, so that's really what it's going to look like. We're going to do a black tumbler. And our perimeter we said was 238. 238. the top is on the bottom here, right? So we need to rotate it 180? 180, yep. We know it's straight because that is bolted to the machine. So right. straight is straight. Right. And then we want to change this to 80 because right. that's the we size. Want to make 80 by 80. Make sure it's locked Oops, no. into a square. There we go. Okay, that, that distorts our image because our image isn't that's okay. Okay. Yeah, normally you'll just make a square, but for the, the purpose right. of this example, let's just keep it in okay. a square. It's sort of a square, but that's a really good point. All right, so we want to put two of these on here, so we're going to copy that. We've already knocked out all the white. And what we want to do here is we want to make sure, since these are 80 by 80, we mm -hmm. want to make sure that they are exactly 39 millimeters spaced apart in the middle. So we're going to grab um, the rectangle. 
Mm -hmm. And we're going to draw one here. And what was the number? 39. You get 39 millimeters square. You can uncheck the lock, yeah, because we're just going to make a square from a rectangle. Do you know that all squares are rectangle? Mm-hmm. Okay, so here it is. <laughs> <laughs> so much learning. I'm scared. I'm scared right now. All right. Perfect. Okay. Now you see how it's kind of off the edge of the tumbler on the screen? That is perfectly normal and perfectly okay. Because if you look at the left and right side of the screen, you see minus 180 and plus 180. Obviously in the middle is zero. So you have 360 degrees of rotation that you can engrave upon that tumbler. And even though it's over, it's not on top of the tumbler, it's perfectly okay because the tumbler is going to turn. You can actually, I think, cut up to or engrave up to what, 1080, is it? I think it'll do three revolutions. So you have something really long, you can do a continuous turn around that. And we'll show that in a different video, like a snake or something going around the entire gotcha. thing. Yeah. It's pretty cool. If you got really long words that you want to curve around in like a diagonal fashion, you could do that as well. So that's pretty neat. So we are going to delete the box now that we don't need that, right? Yeah, you don't want to engrave that. So, okay. Right? And it's all you don't have to worry about the left and right sides because that will automatically be 39 millimeters because that's all that's left. And we're going to leave the default settings once we chose the black tumbler? Yep, for the, okay. the tumbler, it's going to be perfect. It's come out perfect, and we've done several test cuts already. Now, this image is not perfectly optimized. You can see there's a little bit of white stuff on the edge of the, U, the, the unit mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. That's okay. We'll leave that in there. But normally, we would optimize these images perfectly. Do you for, think they need to be moved down a little bit on the tumbler, or you're happy with the location? Um, I would make them a little more centered. What do you think? We, I mean, down further? Yeah, yeah, yeah towards okay. uh, the center of the tumbler. It's a little too close to the top. You don't want to put your lips on an engraving because it How's can be kind of rough. Better? There's plenty of lip room there. I think so. Okay, yeah, it looks good to me. Okay, so you ready? Yeah. Let me go ahead and okay. send it. Start. Now, I don't know what this measuring the diameter of the cylinder does because we've already entered it. I don't know if it changes anything or does it change anything in our diameter? Or is it just validating what we put in there? I don't know. No, I look at it on the side. It still says 238. All right. So it's going to take 11 um, minutes, 50 seconds, and we're going to go ahead and click on send and then click the start button on the machine. All right. So the trickiest part is if you want to do one logo on the cup, then it's pretty easy because it can go anywhere and since it's a, a perfect circle you don't care where it goes because it's always in the middle but if you want to do two that's where it gets a little tricky because you want them to be equally spaced and that was a problem we had with math <laughs> so we just measured it's 238 millimeters in uh, circumference or diameter or whatever they're calling it so we have two images perimeter here. 238 perimeter perimeter okay that is circumference right it's not on a three-dimensional. So I have two images I want to put on here. And we've measured these out to, what, 80 millimeters? Mm -hmm. We think they look pretty good, 80 millimeters in square. Well, square, it's actually a circle it's in a, a square. Right. right, yep. All right, so we have 80 millimeters times two. So I have 238 total. So I'm going to do a little basic math. I'm going to subtract 160, which is 80 times two. And I'm going to come out with 78. So I have 78 millimeters left over on these open spaces here. So what I want to do is divide that by two. Why? So I'll have the equal amount of space on this side and an equal amount of space here. So this and this will be whatever half of this is, which is actually 39 millimeters. So this should be 39 millimeters in space. And you can make a little square here and we'll show you in the software how we did that. And this will automatically be 39 because that's all that's left. So now you have two equally spaced designs with an equal space in between them all. And we'll show you how that's done in the software. This is kind of helpful. When this thing's engraving, you see the table shakes a little bit. So what I'll do is put a weight or something on here to help hold it down and take some of the shake out. because I heard this thing knocks out and ignores white. So you see this white box around? We brought it in as a JPEG and added it and started to do an engraving after we did the other project. And it looks like it completely ignored the white. I check, I'm gonna loosen this. 
smidge. Pull this away. And there it is. Look at that. We actually have some gradient in here. You see you that? You do. You do. That's interesting. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. And let's see about our white test. It totally ignored the white box around here. It sure did. And it that gave us a awesome. little bit of a gradient here. That's pretty neat, isn't it? Yeah. That looks really cool. I'm kind of digging this effect. I it's do kind too. Of I like a different that a lot. Gray here. Because we didn't change it um, to just a bitmap map image. Right. We just kind of let it roll. And this one here was just a JPEG with a white box. Completely ignored everything that was white. That looks great.